I guess I see the, the paradigm that anything arises from matter as being hopelessly outdated. Uh, and if you, if one thinks as, uh, uh, in, a, in a typical uh, so-called reductionistic way, that uh, whatever phenomena we, we see can also be described as, as physical phenomena, then in a sense matter went out the window in physics 80 years ago. And no one in physics seriously thinks of matter as fundamental. I mean, a number of papers have been written about this in the kind of in the cognitive science literature. But the language of neuroscience at this point is, is completely a classical language. Uh, and it's a language that describes things and processes. But I would characterize even the, the kind of classical neuroscience perspective on consciousness, not as consciousness arises from matter, but rather consciousness arises from um, complex energetic processes that happen to be implemented by brains, in our case, or our bodies to, to make things a little bit broader. Um, but there's, in a sense, nothing special about our particular brains or bodies in that perspective. Uh, you know, you could talk about the consciousness that's implemented by an amoeba's brain and body, or its body, given that it has no recognizable brain. Uh, and in many cases, uh, conventional neuroscience will sort of shudder at that. You know, for example, uh, there was a long email conversation with Bernard Bars uh, involved, involving a number of people, and, and one of the points that he made was, uh, you know, we have very good criteria for consciousness that include certain criteria of responsiveness and being able to remember your name and things like that, which are all very human specific. And so um, another aspect of the question to explore is uh, when a neuroscientist talks about consciousness arising in the brain is what does that person actually mean by the term consciousness? And are they using that word in a way that is primarily motivated by concerns that are essentially medical and have to do with uh, is the experiencing entity a um, kind of normally functioning awake, aware human being. And if the definition of consciousness uh, is made in reference to that kind of assumption, then um, of course any notion that consciousness is universal is ruled out from the beginning. Uh, but that's a question uh, I think only of, of how is this particular word in English currently being defined. And if you ask the question differently, uh, you say, is responsiveness to the environment, uh, you know, produced by the brain? Uh, the answer would be sure, but lots of things are responsive to their environment. So by using a different concept, one can get a, a much broader answer very easily. I'm not sure where I whether I've actually answered your question there or not. Uh, but I think that one can uh, drive any discussion of consciousness to universality, <laughs> in a sense, very easily. Uh, and I would say this is how I came to the notion of consciousness as universal myself, that uh, the I would say the, the absolutely core assumption of science 
is that there's nothing special about us. You know, our position is not privileged. Uh, and that assumption is made explicitly in cosmology. We say our, our point of view in the universe is like any other point of view. And that's the only reason we can do cosmology. You know, if our position is special, then we can't actually see what's going on. We can only see what our special position reveals to us. Uh, so if you say there's nothing special about humans, um, and humans have this particular feature called consciousness, and must be implemented somehow or other by their brains, because if you cut their heads off, they don't have it anymore. Um, and then start looking in the brain, and you don't see anything that's particularly special, and you know our genetics isn't special, we're just like most other critters, and like plants or yeast or bacteria, and our biochemistry is shared across all of life, uh, and the architecture of our cells is more or less preserved throughout eukaryotes <laughs> and largely into to prokaryotes, then you start to think, okay, well, you know, if this consciousness stuff is part of biology, then it must be universal across biology because there's nothing special about us. Uh, so go down one level, you know, I mean, there's nothing special about our atoms, <laughs> uh, nothing special about our elementary particles. Uh, the only thing that's, that's sort of unique about us is the particular informational structure that makes our bodies, you know, human bodies instead of something else. You can take all those same atoms and rearrange them into a piece of furniture, but the organization is a human organization. Um, but there's no, there's no good way to say that, that our experience is because of some particular feature of our organization that's so unique to us that it's not shared by lots of other things. So, driven by that reasoning, that's called a slippery slope argument, <laughs> you end up saying, well, consciousness must be like mass or energy, it's something that everything has. Um, and if that's the case, then it becomes just a fundamental undefined term. <laughs> like energy. We have no idea what energy is. It's something we talk about. Uh, we know how to manipulate it. We know how to do calculations about it. But in a sense, we have no kind of metaphysical or ontological theory of energy. And it would be pointless to try to pursue one within physics at this point, because it's well recognized that this is a base level concept that other stuff is built on top of but the, the stuff that's built on top of it has no access to, to explaining that term itself. And I suspect we may end up in exactly the same place about consciousness. It's like, okay, it's a feature of the universe. <laughs> and we might be able to say, it's the same feature of the universe as some other feature that we call by some other name. <laughs> oh. And, you know, maybe consciousness and entanglement are the, exactly the same thing. I don't know. But um, I think that kind of identification uh, may be the best kind of conceptual simplification that we might hope for. <laughs>